We are in the heart of England. This is Stratford-upon-Avon, Warwickshire. And this is the most famous theatre in the world. It's the home of the Royal Shakespeare Company. The fame of the company has always been associated with the works of William Shakespeare. All the world's a stage and all the men and women merely players. They have their exits and their entrances and one man in his time plays many parts. Here they're rehearsing a recent production of As You Like It. But this Shakespearean tradition would not have occurred without the efforts of this man and his descendants. His name is Edward Fordham Flower. The achievement was made possible by the success of a family brewery which he founded here in Stratford-upon-Avon. The legacy of this Shakespearean tradition which the Flowers began still survives today. Not only in the many delightful inns and taverns which adorn the English countryside, but also in the famous Royal Shakespeare Company theatres, both in London and Stratford. This is the story of a remarkable family, the Flowers of Stratford. Edward Fordham's family had been successful brewers in Hertfordshire, and probably remembering those early days, he set up a new brewery in Stratford, which opened in 1831. Dennis Flower is a direct descendant of the founder and has been both managing director and chairman of the brewery. Water is very, very important for producing beer. So when this started, uh, my great-grandfather dug down and he needed to um, use diamonds at one stage to cut through the rock and eventually they went down to 750 feet an artesian well which means that the water sprung up over the top of the brewery 40 feet and they had great difficulty putting a cork in it and the water was superb for bitter beer edward fordham was four times mayor of stratford and was asked to take a leading role in the 300th anniversary celebrations of shakespeare's birth as part of his scheme a magnificent temporary pavilion was constructed this festival would firmly establish the Shakespearean tradition at Stratford. It was at this time that flowers adopted Shakespeare's image as their trademark. Edward Fordham Flower had three sons, Charles, William Henry and Edgar. It was the eldest son, Charles, who was to help his father in organizing the Shakespeare birthday celebrations of 1864. Charles dreamed of a permanent company of actors to perform Shakespearean productions in Stratford. To achieve this, he needed a theater. So in 1874, he announced that he would donate a theater to Stratford as a Shakespeare memorial. But there was much opposition in the press. Practically, the scheme has not much more chance than a hospital on Salisbury Plain. A theatre built on beer? In 1879, the new Memorial Theatre opened on Shakespeare's birthday with an eight-day festival. As well as donating the site, Charles Flower contributed more than half the cost of the building. Evadne Lloyd, Charles Flower's great-niece, remembers. Well, it was very much a part of my life as a child. I saw the plays dozens and dozens of times. And one of my earliest memories was um, my brother, Jack, smuggling me into the theatre. And we used to creep round to the back of the circle and watch the play, and then wait until the family, who always sat on the left-hand side, went out during the interval. And then we used to wait, hidden, and play noughts and crosses on the pillars. In those days, there was a strong link between the everyday lives of the theatre and the brewery. The scenery was kept at the brewery. Uh, not only that, but uh, when they needed a crowd in the theatre, the 
um, chaps were told to down tools, go down to the theatre and act as a crowd in Julius Caesar or whatever the play was and shout rhubarb, rhubarb and then back to the brewery. And a further thing was that the box office at the theatre was in fact run by the accounts department at the brewery. In addition to the developments at the theatre, Charles Flower revitalised the brewery. In 1866, a Midland newspaper reported, many of the improvements in the manufacture of beer which are now in use throughout the country owe their origin to the members of this firm. Charles was the first to introduce refrigeration into the process. And the vats were given names from Shakespeare. These included Hamlet, As You Like It, and Falstaff. And we sent it to North and South America, to Australia, to uh, you name it, everywhere. Uh, the Cape, India, a lot of beer sent to India. The uh, journey on the ship did it a lot of good in the barrel. And uh, indeed, this is probably why uh, we're certainly one of the first to have originated the name of India Pale Ale for that reason. Charles Flower not only built a new brewery and sent Flower's beers the world over, but he brought a new life and energy to the Shakespearean tradition at Stratford. He was far ahead of his time in realising that a permanent theatre and company would lead to productions of a higher standard. When he died in 1892, the mantle came to rest upon the youngest brother, Edgar. For the next 11 years, Edgar took up the responsibility for the brewery and the theatre, but in 1903, the mantle was passed yet again. This time, it came to rest upon his son, Archibald. As well as becoming mayor of Stratford, Archie was to dominate the life of the brewery and the theatre for 40 years. Disaster struck in 1926, when the Memorial Theatre caught fire and was destroyed, leaving just the shell. The very next morning, Archie and his artistic director visited the site and sketched the plans of a major new theatre in the ashes with their umbrella points. Archie launched a massive campaign in both England and America to raise the quarter of a million pounds needed for the rebuilding. This photograph album was presented to Archie at the time and records the reconstruction work in progress. Whilst finishing touches were made to the fabric of the building, actors were busy rehearsing the opening productions, Henry IV, parts one and two. In 1932, Archie's new Shakespeare Memorial Theatre was opened in the presence of the Prince of Wales. Over 100,000 people came to Stratford to watch the opening ceremony, which was broadcast by the BBC and by the first ever live relay to America. Shakespeare himself would not have asked for another statue to be erected in his honour. He could have desired nothing better than that his plays should find a permanent home within a hundred yards of the church where he lies. Archie's finest achievement was the resurrection of his Uncle Charles's dream for a permanent theatre in Stratford, complete with its own company of actors. Throughout his life, he was entirely dedicated to the family cause and he created a sound financial base for both of his great interests. He was knighted for his services to theatre. It was not until 1945, when the Second World War ended, that Archie's son Fordham took up the reins of office. 
Oh, well, my father, who hadn't been well for some time, uh, wanted to hand everything over. He simply said, over to you, boy, theatre, brewery, everything. Fordy began the first of his historic partnerships when he appointed Anthony Quayle as artistic director. This became a cornerstone of the post-war revival at Stratford. Lady Flower. They had the same enthusiasm. They were both the kind of men who make things happen. And they shared the same dreams and aspirations for the theatre. And after all the anxiety that Fordy had been through, searching for the right man and not finding him, then he found Tony. And then he knew that he was onto the right man. As part of his plan, Quayle introduced top names into the company. The nearest Flowers pub to the Memorial Theatre in Stratford is the Black Swan, otherwise known affectionately as the Dirty Duck. It's a regular haunt for both actors and theatre goers. Harry Andrews was painted here by the artist Leonard Bowden. You know, well, it was act of paint you as we saw you in the, as the Duke in Measure for Measure. Well, now that demanded a tremendous amount of costume and wigs and everything. I said, well, I really don't see that I'm going to get up and down to London with that gear. Um, I said, never mind. May we uh, paint you as we first met you outside the Dirty Duck, like we are now? I said, well, yes, why not? And uh, that is the result. Harry Andrews had been invited to play at Stratford by Anthony Quayle. As well as revitalizing the Stratford Theatre, Quayle took the company on highly successful tours of Europe and Australasia. He also saw the need for a permanent London base. This was eventually achieved by his succeeding artistic director, Peter Hall. Fordy and he were to form another historic partnership which was to revolutionize British theatre. It was at this time that the name was changed to the Royal Shakespeare Company. Sir Peter Hall. It was a wonderful relationship, and he was a wonderful man to work with. And uh, in some sense, when he died tragically and, and so early, some part of my heart went out of it, I must say. I mean, he was, he was like a, a father, headmaster, mentor, commanding officer, um, all those things to me. And uh, I think he was a great man. I use the word very, very carefully, um, because he, his, his modesty and his originality meant in some ways he was, um, he was unsung and always going to be unsung. That was his style. Fordy had successfully carried forward the great flower legacy of selfless commitment. He brought a new vision to the theatre, which led to revolutionary changes in its development. He was knighted by Her Majesty the Queen in recognition of his contribution to British theatre. In 1954, Fordy saw the Flowers Brewery merge with Greens of Luton. Because of the popularity of Flowers beers, it was decided to retain the name and the new group with its 1,450 pubs in 23 counties from Cumberland to Kent was given the title Flowers Breweries. But the fame of this traditional family brewery was not to end here. The Flowers were later involved in a highly successful merger with Whitbread and Company. As a result of this, the continuing success of their beers has been secured and the name of Flowers is preserved on the many pub signs which are found in the English countryside today. The prestige which surrounds the name of Flowers is a credit to the men who have fought for both the theatre and the brewery since the original foundation in 1831. Charles Flower is the great-great-grandson of Edward Fordham Flower, and he's the present-day chairman of Whitbread Flowers Limited. Your name? Hello. Your name? Pint of flowers best, please. 
It is highly appropriate that William Shakespeare was adopted as the Flowers Brewery trademark, considering the efforts they have made in promoting his name as the world's greatest playwright. Thank you. The Flower family motto is et flores et fructus, both flowers and fruit. Over the years, they have been exceedingly fruitful. I'm very proud to be part of a tradition that was started back in 1831 by Edward Fordenflower, my great-great-grandfather. And you know, it's a tradition that has linked fine beers with the plays of William Shakespeare for many years now. And I'm looking forward to a long association between the Flower family, the Royal Shakespeare Company, and the fine quality beers of Flowers Brewery.